Hello, and welcome to this segment of Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. My name is Todd Taylor, Lead Instructor with Advanced Rescue Solutions. In this segment, we're going to talk about tools, tips, and tricks to get the job done quicker. There are certain ways that we can use our tools to our advantage. Simply turning the cutters upside down to get the handle out of the way will not only give us a better cut, but it can protect our hands. Different options with the spreaders of doing a crush down. We're going to look at the tips of the spreaders to see how we can use those to our advantage as well. We're going to go back to doing a total side removal and we'll bring the tools in. The vehicle's already been stabilized. At this point, we can go in and do a peel and peek. New vehicle technology, this becomes very important so that we can see our safety systems. Even in old vehicle technology, it gives us a chance to see where the strongest part of the metal is and possibly have an opening to make our cuts a little shorter. You don't have to remove the plastic all of the way, hence why it's called a peel and peek. Doing a crush down is one way of opening the door to get a purchase point instead of using the halligan bar and the axe. It's one person with powered hydraulics. To save time, as you walk in to do the crush down, open up your tools. As you do the crush down, you're putting one tip of the tool against the door frame and one tip of the tool against the roof rail. That opens up the door and gives us a large purchase point and allows us to see the nader pin. Once the crush down is complete, take your spreaders and close them. We're talking about recycle time. Do not allow your tools to stay in the position that they end at. As you walk back, put your tools in the position that they will start from. With the purchase point complete, now we can come in with the spreaders and pop the nader pin. Do not stand between the tool and the car so that you're, you have a safe position to work from. You have to have the ability to work both right-handed and left-handed in order to operate the tools. As that door begins to open, do not continue to allow the metal to tear. Don't let pride overcome progress. At the point in time that it starts to spread, simply call for the cutters to come in and cut the nader pin. We have a set of tools that are capable of cutting the nader pin in almost every manufacturer that you have now. Allowing the spreaders to continue to spread would do nothing more than rip the metal apart. Having the cutters come in and cut puts them in the proper position. And again, as that cut is finished, make sure that you recycle the cutters to an open position. The spreaders come back in fully closed, hyperextend the door back, allowing the door to be ready to go. Depending on the severity of the accident, once the rear door is open, you may have to use the spreaders to hyperextend the door back. Simply grabbing a piece of webbing Using a girth hitch around the window frame will allow us to also pull that door back. Before we do the lower post cut, ensure that we've done a peel and peek to see where the safety systems are. Again, it also tells us where the seatbelt retractor is, and even in old vehicle technology, there is steel behind that seatbelt retractor. We don't want to cut directly through that. When we come in with the cutter to do the lower B post cut, Make sure that you watch the end position of the tool. As that tool starts to cut, it could very well rock. As that rocks, with the motorcycle grips that we have on this, it could pin your hand in place. If that starts to happen, simply allow the tool to come back by relieving the pressure. Using the vehicle's ability in the bent metal that we have already here in the door channel, it will allow us to come in now with the spreaders and push that. Not only are we using the tools to our advantage, but now we're using the vehicle to our advantage. A lot of times when we start this push, it will rip where we need it to. If we need to change the direction of that cut, all we have to do is simply come in with an air chisel. If you don't have somebody that is proficient with the air chisel, that is the time to go to the yard and start to train. The air chisel is simply going to change the direction. Cut. 
The goal of a rip and blitz or total side removal is two pushes and two cuts. Don't get, again, let pride get into there and just rip. If we have to call for another tool, it's very simple to do. Modern four-door vehicles have the driver sitting behind the B-post the majority of the time. By doing a total side removal, it allows us not to have to manipulate the patient around the B-post. We can now take them out in the linear pull. As you've seen, the lower hinge plate gave way on that by having the door webbed back it allowed the rescuer to maintain a safe position. Once the lower B-post is blown away, now we can come in and cut the upper B-post. As you'll see, our rescuer first comes in with the handle of the cutter up. By doing that, we're either going to destroy the handle or we're going to pin our hand in place. By simply turning the tool upside down, it gives us a deeper cut and gets our hands in a safe position. With the door open now, depending on the severity of our entrapment and the type of patient that we have, we can simply come in, lay the seat back, and now bring our patient out linearly. If we need additional room, we can cut the hinges. The advantage of cutting the hinges is less impact to the patient and less impact on the car. When we do cut the hinges, ensure that we cut the bottom hinge first. With the weight of the doors, if we cut the top hinge first, it will pinch the lower hinge in place. By cutting the bottom hinge first, it allows the weight to be held by the top hinge. If you have enough rescuers, you may bring another piece of webbing in to assist or change the position of the webbing that you have currently. And again, as you can see, by cutting the hinges, each time he takes the tool out, he opens it to the full position. Spreaders get put in the full closed position. Now with the door off, the entire side of the vehicle is accessible and we can take the patient out in a safe manner. We've shown how to use powered hydraulics in a couple of various ways. Now we're gonna show you an air tool and an electric tool that will help us that are generally in our cash on a rescue truck. Over-reliance on powered hydraulics has become a fatal mistake in the rescue business. We're gonna start on the A-post with an air chisel. With the air chisel, you wanna make sure that it's always oiled, always maintained. Make sure that you have a spare bit with you at all times in case one were to break or get stuck. Never dry fire an air chisel. Always put the air chisel against the solid object to test it. Once you have tested it and make sure that it's ready to go, Short burst with an air chisel make it much more controlled. Once that is all the way through, the A post is cut just like a powered hydraulic cutter. Several operations can be going on at the same time. One person on a spreader, one on the cutter, one on the air chisel, one on the sawzall. With the advent of larger C posts, it's very difficult for our O cutters to make a C post cut in one cut. It's much easier for a sawzall to come in and do that cut. When you look at that, make sure we're doing smart cuts. There's much more metal here than there is up here. Take the C-post at the shortest point. You may also, when you do your peel and peek, see a speaker in the C-post. If you do, that also is a smart cut. By removing that speaker, it gives us less metal to cut. As you can see, when we came in, we put a spare blade in our pocket. With a spare blade in our pocket, it gives us the opportunity to have 
a quick change if something were to go along, along with our blade. The very rapid cut with the right blade and the right person operating the tool very quick. In this segment, we've shown several tips in order to save time in the total rescue incident. By recycling our tools from full open to full close or to their starting position, it saves us 10 seconds. 10 seconds over the entire rescue may be minutes. By using a sawzall and an air chisel in combination with each other, it frees up our powered hydraulics to do other jobs. Thank you for watching this segment of Training Minutes. Thank you to Helmatra for sponsoring it. My name is Todd Taylor.